Hey, it's Felice, totally awake, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, then welcome. Now, I've seen this new video on JW.org of Tony Motherfreaking Morris, okay? And I started to think, man, he has certainly had a change of heart. So let's just listen to some of what he's saying, and then I'll, I'll let you know what I'm talking about. And I just want us to look at... um. How old he looks. He's, he's, he's getting pretty old and it's, it's something that we can all be grateful for, right? To grow older and um, to age. But for him, we can be extra grateful. Come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. So that's a statement inspired by God. And when we reflect on it, give it a lot of thought, you can sense that Jehovah really cares about us as individuals, and that's what we want to develop this morning. You think of this verse, it just proves Jehovah cares about us as individuals. Now, that's important because regardless of whoever we are from time to time, negative emotions can affect us. Uh, for instance, I know Jehovah loves all these brothers and sisters, but I'm just not sure about me. Well, if you reflect on this verse, see, that reassures us Jehovah cares about us as individuals. Now, that's appropriate. Uh, nothing technically wrong with it. However, the revision helps us appreciate you have 153 big fish. Even if you've got strong fishermen, they're hauling. Uh, the word draw doesn't capture it uh, in translation. And that helps us appreciate, now in John 6, 44, we wouldn't say haul. It still says, draws him. See, it's a different word, and words uh, do matter, and we appreciate the revision here. This makes sense, even though the literal Greek uh, is there to draw. What the hell are you talking about? Tony Morris, you don't even sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, you sound like you probably tipsy up there. And this is your leader, Jehovah's Witnesses. This is one of your eight leaders. Great. Great for you. Um, I would not be listening to this man. He don't sound like you know what he's talking about. He, he really don't sound like you know what he's talking about. I mean, I'm not all into the Bible stuff, you know, as far as knowing about the Greek scriptures and this certain stuff about the scriptures, but I know he don't know. He don't know. They are not Bible scholars. Okay. So you talking about what something should have been translated to, but you don't have any credentials to be translated anything. You or any of your homeboys or anybody over there on your team. So I'm not listening to you talking about nothing. You don't know what you're talking about. Seeing John six forty four draws different. Uh, we, Jesus knew his father and still knows more about his father than any person alive. And no way would he want us to be thinking that he hauls us in, or we might say drags people into the truth. So what do you want to call it then, Tony? Okay. Um, because what is it? fear them into the so-called truth? Because that's what you did. When you tell people that everybody on planet Earth is going to die at Armageddon, except for the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, that's pretty much dragging people. That's, that's fear margaring them. That's something that Jesus would not approve of, for sure. For sure. And let's not forget that he constantly wants to remind us who Jehovah's enemies are and what Jehovah plans to do to his enemies. He makes you think, oh, I don't ever want to become Jehovah's enemy. Here's what Jehovah's promising. Hey. <laughs> That's Jehovah's enemies. They're going to vanish like smoke. That's not, that's, that's not the approved way, definitely. You know, if you're trying to gain Jesus' approval, that you went about it the wrong way. Well, that's a priceless lesson for all of us to remember in our uh, preaching activity, the Bible study activity, a parent, 
or parents raising a child. See, sometimes you can come across like you're dragging them. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, no, Tony, it doesn't work when you try to drag someone into a cult, okay? But this tone that you're talking is a totally different tone than what you were talking just a few years ago. Check this clip out. And uh, <laughs> it's not helping you. <laughs> nope. Uh, this is to you personally. He's got to make you firm. Not Grandpa. Jehovah has got to make you firm. And we have that opportunity to have all that love and interest of those strong in the truth, but this is personal. We've always made that point very clear. And you young ones, uh, we've been entreating you. You've got to get that clear. Especially as you get older, the only way you're getting through this storm, the great one, is your relationship with God. Your personal relationship. Just like everybody else. Unless you're a toddler, we know how Jehovah sanctify them. But as you get older, you are responsible. Remember the nice demo? We've mentioned that before. Well, I'm not ready to get baptized. Okay, let's hold off on your driver's license. What? I'm 16. What are you talking about? I'm ready. I know I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready for a driver's license, but you're not ready to dedicate your life. Hmm. Explain that one to heaven. See, he's definitely speaking a different tone here. Okay, so this was back at the 2015 regional convention. And then he was basically saying that, you know, to drag your kids in the so-called truth. Okay, not only to drag them in, but to blackmail them. Okay, to withhold them getting their driver's license. Something that we need in this world, right? We need to know how to drive. We need our driver's license so we can get around. Man, that is blackmail. When you're telling me I can't get my, my license unless I get baptized into your religion. And, and, and we all know, and if you don't know, that is a lifelong commitment that you're requesting a child, a minor child to do, okay? Something that they will have to live up to for the rest of their life or risk being shunned by everyone that they've possibly ever known for the rest of their life if they decide never to, you know, write a letter and return to the cult. You're asking them to make a lifelong decision, okay? But now you change your tune these days. But why is it, Tony Morris, that you have changed your tune and you're basically saying, you know, don't, don't try to drag nobody in? Is it because of what you just said and, and you found that out, you see that now? It doesn't work. And in this day and age, with the internet, <laughs> okay, it's definitely not working. It's too many social media platforms. It's too many. It's, it's too much going around. And they're finding out the truth about your so-called truth. And so why would you encourage the parents to, you know, drag their kids in the truth and try to force this down when, you know, it's, it's just too hard these days. It's just too hard. And you know that your days are numbered as well. And... You know, I, I think just like I said before, deep down inside, y'all y'all probably want people to get out because y'all know y'all running a scam. And it's like, you know what, just the good, just it's some smart people. Just let them go ahead and go. The ones that's going to be dumb and stay in this, then just let them stay in. Shoot. Jehovah's gentle with his drawing of a person. Uh, he respects their free will by means of his Holy Spirit, his word. He'll tug at the heart and he draws them. Well, we all know that's a lie when you're talking about this so-called Jehovah God. When we know that you, Tony Morris, and your homeboys, y'all are the Jehovah, okay? The so-called Jehovah God, okay? That he, he doesn't let people use their free will. I mean, he hates it. He he, he hates it. That's, that's like one of the number one things that he hates is for people to use their free will, okay? He blackmails people when they try to leave. He want to take their family away and, 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 you know, enforce all kind of shunning policies that he didn't even come up with until the 1950s after, you know, he was bashing the Catholic Church about their, you know, excommunication policies, okay? So... How do he res respect people in a free will? It's either join the cult or die. Stay in the cult 
or be shunned and expect to die. <laughs> Wait to die. I mean, how is that respect to anybody free will? Like, it's, it's fear-mongering people to join. Period. That's, that's, not, that's not free will. That's just fear. And uh, that's important because you have a comment there about what young people might reason. Well, he drew my parent or parents, but not me. Well, that's erroneous thinking when you look at what Jesus said here. No man, that includes the, the women, can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So that's an individual attention that Jehovah gives, and that's priceless. So whatever you're dealing with, you have to pause and think, well, Jehovah, you drew me, and uh, that's precious. Uh, that'll get you through all sorts of negative thinking, and you just get rid of it because the sovereign of the universe drew you into your baptized relationship with him. You mean your baptized relationship with a cult, okay? That's just been around just a little over 100 years, and they've been lying over 100 years, okay, since they started. It's been a doomsday cult, okay? He wants you to get rid of any negative thinking. Like, what? Maybe it's not the truth. Maybe the so-called apostate lies are really the truth about my so-called truth. Maybe my organization really does protect pedos because of their two-witness rule and not wanting to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. So they just sweep it up under the rug, you know? Maybe they start thinking those kind of thoughts. I mean, wh what are you saying, Stephen Lett? I mean, Toni Morris, one of y'all. And another thing, it's sad how they think that this Jehovah God will draw people in but leave out their loved ones. I mean, man, can can you draw other people that I love in too so I won't be lonely in this mug? Because these people in here is fake. As soon as I do something wrong, they're going to drop me like a hot potato. Let me have my family, you know? But then if you if I bring them in, they're they going to drop me like a hot potato too because they're going to be so deep in the cold. Like, it's just crazy. I can't win. Nobody can't win. And that's something we should always feel special about. And I think of different circumstances of uh, uh, meditating on this text and it brought to mind an experience I had back in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. This is for my wife and I had children and I remember being at the meeting and it was a nice experience. And here's this young person, late teens, uh, not looking like one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Not looking like a Jehovah's Witness. Why? Whatever do you mean by that? Let me guess. Did he have a beard? He just kind of came in and I had observed him and he sits down and nobody's talking to him at that point. So I went over, sat next to him. How are you? Mentioned the name, just, uh, you know, glad to have you here and trying to get to know him. Well, it turns out his mom was a baptized witness and long not doing anything with the, the family had all sorts of issues. And yet, in spite of all of this, it occurred to me, Jehovah drew this young person to him, right to the kingdom hall. He wants a Bible study. He had all sorts of uh, thoughts. Just because he was so quiet, see, sometimes that means they're deep thinkers. Don't even try to act like you like deep thinkers, okay? You want everybody to just follow the rules, okay? And it was just a privilege to be used by rules. Jehovah to help him, and I always appreciated that. And he came along, had different things to deal with, ended up uh, married to a nice pioneer sister. They had children. They raised the truth. And he's been an elder for a long time. Uh, why? Because Jehovah noticed yeah, his, his mom... Uh, he may have drawn some point in her life, but in the midst of all of this uh, wrong that's going on, and this has happened to more than one individual witness where their parent or parents, they weren't living up to it, but here they are serving the true God. Well, it just proves. 
To me, this was just his message to everybody, all the parents out there that are shunning their kids because they are disfellowship or they disassociated because they no longer want to be a part of it. You know, or even the kids that's out there shunning their parents because their parents are the ones that woke up and realized that, you know, they raised them in a cult and they don't want to be a part of it anymore. You know, this is his message to them, to them to keep going, keep serving, quote unquote, Jehovah. OK, keep in the cult, keep in the lie, keep in the false. That's all right that your loved one don't want to be in it. Jehovah drew you in. You know, he got to make them feel special. I hey, don't worry about it. They're going to die. Your, your loved one don't going to die. But don't worry about it because look what you gain. You got the, the spiritual family. You know how he talk about how the man got a wife and a kid and he raising them in the truth. You know, try to make it seem like, oh, he's so blessed. But what about his mom and his daddy? You just don't give a darn about that. You just want people to just come to your cult. And just, just, just bump. I can see this is not even, it's a cult. So it's not something that's like true. And they have to leave their people behind. But it's not true, y'all. It's not true. And you leaving, you leaving and cutting people off and condemning them and making it seem like they less than just because they're not a part of the cult. Man, please. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this. Jehovah cares for them as an individual. He drew them into the truth. That's priceless. It's something that we should always treasure. And parents can learn, too, uh, as you're learned, too, uh, as you're. He said. <laughs> working with a child or children, stay away from the dragging them into the truth. That's not God's way. He doesn't do it. I don't know who we think we are. I don't know who we think we are. Yeah, I don't know either. But you cannot drag anybody, whether it's a Bible study or your own child, into a relationship with God. 